So, a ball comes in from the yellow team to one of the players, one of their teammates in here. Now, the idea of this is that these two players will try to steal the ball as they keep passing the ball around. My name is Peter Augustine. I am an FA Coach Development Officer for London and the South East of England. So the name of this session, I've called it Passing Circles. And the aim of this is to look at the idea of how we get our players to be better at passing the ball. Now, I mean, I know that sounds kind of very straightforward, but the idea of this is to give the players an opportunity to use some of the six capabilities that we talk about in the FA. So things like deception, positioning, scanning, etc. And all these will come out in the session. This session is aimed at um, youth development phase players who are working in the grassroots game. So the idea is we're, real, we're really still trying to develop the players and develop those passing skills that we want to see in the game. This session can be done indoors or outdoors. Most coaches don't have the luxury of having, say, half a pitch, as I've set it up here. But what you might do, you might actually take this section and have it pre-set up in this section here. So after you've finished your warm-up in here, you just take those cones away and your session's already set up in your, in your quarter of a pitch. Obviously, if you've got half a pitch, you can set it up like this. And some people might be lucky enough to have a whole pitch. You might actually make the, the, the bigger side where you play your game. So, without further ado, I'll explain to you about, about the session. Now, what we've got in the middle, we've got a 3v2 in here. And then we've got players who will play for each team. Now, what you can do, you can change this to maybe a 4v3 or a 5v2, whatever it is, depending on the, the ability of your players. So the, this is not a, a, a fait accompli, what you see here. And also, the players on the outside, you've got to think about them as well, what they're going to be doing as well within this practice. So a ball comes in from the yellow team to one of the players, one of their teammates in here. Now, the idea of this is that these two players will try to steal the ball as they keep passing the ball around. Now, the idea of this is they've got to try and get to five passes. Now, those five passes can be to the players on the outside or can be between each other. And all the time, these two players are trying to steal the ball. Now, if they steal the ball, they can then pass that to one of their players. And as that happens, the player can drive in and one of the other players can drop out. And now you have a 3v2, but going the other way. And again, the practice just starts again. Again, with this practice, it's about the idea of the player's ability. And you'll be able to get different things out of out, out out the practice. So you can look at their scanning. Are they able to find out, uh, to scan, to see where their players are? Uh, the defending players, if they win the ball, are they able to, do they know where their players are when, um, uh, when they win the ball back? And do the players on the outside, do they recognise it's time for them to come in and one of the other players from the other side to come out? So we're working on all those really key skills that we want from our players. What we do as a progression is once five passes have been made, the five from the inside will come out and then five from the outside come in. Now, that will leave us with a couple of players spare but they will go in on the next go round. Now, again, this will depend on your numbers. So if you've got um, uh, more numbers than this or less numbers than this, that will just change it again. And if, you've got, if you have, do have less numbers, you might go to a, say, a maybe a, 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 a two versus one in there, say for example, or something like that, which will, will, again, will change the practice a little bit. But, you, as a coach, you've got to look at your environment and work it out for your environment. That's really, really important. As I said earlier on, this is not, uh, 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 it's not the way, it's just a way. Okay, so if you want to progress this warm-up, what you can do is when a player plays the ball out and they're in the possession of the ball, one play, a player plays it, comes out, and the other player comes in. And what you can also do as one of your progressions is this. Once they've started to understand the, the, the session, 
is what you can do, you can now start to, the players get them to move on the outside. So what happens there is the players have to now start to scan a bit more because their players, their teammates, won't be in the same position as they were before. So that helps them. Another progression is this, is your five passes can only be between the players in the middle. They can still use the players on the outside, but that's just to keep possession of the ball. So in now, these players in here have to work harder to get the passes in, and they're in here for a little bit longer. After the warm-up, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to go straight into a game-based practice. And the idea of this game-based practice is that we're going to still be looking at all the key skills that we were looking at in the, that we could take took from the warm-up, the circle practice in this uh, practice here. So we're going to be looking at the idea of the player on the ball trying to get the ball into his teammates. They work the ball up the pitch as you would do in a normal game. And what they're going to try and do is they're going to try and score in any one of these three zones. Now, to make it more interesting, what we want to do is the middle zone, we're going to say that's going to be worth two points. And if they get it into the outside zones, that's going to be worth one point. Now, you may ask, why is that? Well, quite simply this. If a team is defending, they're always going to defend the middle of the pitch, which is, like, well, that's where the goal is. So, what we're looking for is if they do this, because I'm now going to start thinking about, well, what would they do if I want to stop them from scoring? Is they should keep the ball. So, we, if they keep the ball, we've got more opportunities to practice our passing, getting on the ball. Eventually, what will happen is these players, somebody will decide to come out and they're going to try and want to win the ball back. What we also have is two neutral players on the outside. Now, keeping the ball and the neutral players, they'll have only two touches to return the ball in, which means that these players who are in possession of the ball, they've got to be ready to receive. We've also got a safe zone. So you might have the safe zone, say, for example, if you're working with players who might have slightly lesser ability, for example. But if the players are quite high, uh, highly skilled, you might say, OK, once you get the ball in, in this end zone, you've got two touches you've got to get out. So you just can't stay in there. So that means as soon as they've taken two touches, one of the players can go in and challenge them in that, in that zone. And if they win it, they go and score and they get a point. From a point of view of, of, of um, the, the coach and you as a coach, you're looking for all the things that you wanted to see from the warm-up and it goes into the game-based practice. Now, at any stage, you can decide to change the two outside players here for someone else. And their role is to act as an outlet ball. So it might be that we might go for a slightly longer pass in here and then we can combine to keep the ball and then try and score. As a progression in this, what you can have on the outside players, you can have a, an outside player from each team, which means that the outlet for the blue team in this, in this instance is out here, which means that the opposition team might stop that outlet, but that's fine because that creates more room in the middle of the pitch for more passes. What we can also do as a progression is this. If, say for example, the yellows have the ball, the blue outside player can come into the pitch to create a defending overload. So then what happens is the game becomes a little bit tighter. So we now start to work on the technique. Can players receive the ball in tight areas and play out from those tight areas? Can we get little one-twos, little give-and-goes, those kind of things? Because those are the different types of passes that we might be looking for. Once that happens, another progression is if, say, for example, that player comes in, the other player on the other side might come in and equal the numbers up. So the, the game numbers will change because the players are coming in and out of the practice. But once your team gets the ball back, say, for example, the player goes back outside to create that wide angle.